Welcome. What causes regular people and business professionals to go from achieving nothing remarkable to obtaining enormous success as a result of their amazing effort? The truth is that you can boost your productivity and achieve success in both your professional and personal life by using these techniques we'll discuss below. What does the professional, the student, get out of this course? What will he, she gain from it? In the development of knowledge, skills and training in order to increase their opportunity through the application of these success tools, they are focused on increasing their productivity. Welcome, I'm David, consultant and manager of the firm Garcia Lomas and Allen Perkins, the ADO Corporation. For more than 15 years and nearly 1,000 days, I have been developing commercial orientation programs, Salesforce training in the development of leadership and management skills, in all types of multinational organizations in the business world and all types of economic activity. This course is developed in eight chapters. 1. Productivity through willpower. Productivity through the instrumentation that we all bring at birth, our thinking, feeling and will, the operating will. 2. Habits that improve your productivity. 5. Habits that improve our productivity and have transformed my life. 3. Achieve your goals through productivity. How to organize your personal and professional activity to achieve objectives. 4. Productivity through people. The six keys to efficiency. 5. Productivity by motivation. How to lead people through motivation. 6. Productivity strategies and methodologies. Methodologies that reactivate us in order to increase productivity. 7. Productivity Pareto and targeting. Improve your productivity through the Pareto law and the targeting matrix. 8. Eisenhower and the productivity matrix. Let's get started. 1. Productivity through willpower. Productivity through the instrumentation that we all bring at birth, our thinking, feeling and will, the operating will. The human soul is tripartite. We have a thinking rooted in our brain and which spreads throughout our body through the nerve endings. We have a feeling located in everything rhythmic and metabolic in our body. We have a will, a operating will expressed in the human body through the legs and arms, and if I think something and I feel that it is correct, knowing that the logic of feeling is different from the logic of thinking, but of great value and different origin than thinking, and that feeling permeates and warms the cold thinking, then it arises the intention to carry out through the senses. What I do thanks to my operating will, the will. First, thinking then feeling, now the intention to carry out the thoughts and sense arise, and with the will, the operating will, under the thought and sense from the world of ideas to the world of reality. By acting in this manner, the human being demonstrates not only that he, she is well educated, but also that is on the path to increase his, her productivity. And always applying our self-discipline, following the step-by-step -step method. No one can stop you if you go step by step. Since without the will put into action, no productivity strategy or system will work. Remember that old phrase, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. It is a proverb that means you can provide someone with a nice opportunity, but you can't make them take it if they don't want to. And yes, countless methodologies can help us but by themselves, without operating will put into action, they lack all effectiveness. For example, the one minute rule. If a task can be done in a minute or less, like cleaning a plate, answering an email, or picking something up from the floor, it should be done immediately. The one minute rule can help people who need to better manage their time or who put off a very specific activities. 
We even know that following this simple rule can help us to create long-term consistent rules and habits because it functions as a motivator for us to be more disciplined. The five-minute rule is a procrastination-focused cognitive behavioral therapy approach where you set a goal to do something you will normally avoid for just five minutes. You can stop after five minutes if their situation becomes unbearable. The mission is completed when you start it. The ABC method. It is a simple but effective method of prioritizing that can be applied daily. This strategy is so powerful that it can make you one of the most efficient and effective people in your profession and just by using it. The simplicity of this strategy works like this. Start by making a list of everything you need to do during a day. Consider your options on paper or in an app before starting the first task. Mark each item on your list with an A, or B or C depending on its level of relative importance. 1. Make a list of your top priorities. 2. Make a list of your secondary responsibilities. And 3. Consider the ramification of doing so. It seems easy. Doesn't it? Well, it is not. It's really difficult to apply these methodologies, strategies, without the application of the omnipresence force of will turn into action. Anyway, this is how we could describe the innumerable options that exist like Pareto Law, Get Things Done, Pomodoro, Time Boxing, Bullet Journal, Zettelkasten, Targeting, but this is not the message. 2. Habits that improve your productivity. 5. Habits that improve your productivity and that have transformed my life. The first step to improve your productivity is to stay healthy and not get sick. Logical, right? But not everyone takes this premise into action. Mahatma Gandhi already said, wealth is not silver and gold coins, but health. If I had to choose between the five habits that have had the greatest impact on my life, which ones could I choose? Let's see. 1. Sleep my 8 hours every day. 2. Eat healthy, a healthy diet, along with intermittent fasting. 3. Exercise to keep me in the best shape possible, according to my sporting history, injuries, and my current age. 4. Do transcendental meditation every day. 5. As I work in my business, I constantly ask myself, whenever what I'm doing now is getting me closer to my main goal. Any of us immediately realize that these are all necessary for our lives to run smoothly. 3. Achieve your goals through productivity. How to organize your professional and personal activity to achieve objectives? Faced with the question of how to organize human activity to achieve objectives, the answer historically was the pyramid. I say historically. That is to say that the apex of the pyramid, a few who knew, who had the knowledge, set the aims and means to attain those objectives, which corresponded to the complete set of the rest of the people below the apex of the pyramid. But over time, the knowledge was permeating and more people were adding to the knowledge. And first, the warriors, then the bourgeoisie, and then new social classes were incorporated into that knowledge. In other words, knowledge was permeating from the top of the pyramid to the bottom. And today, due to a democratization of knowledge, of teaching, everyone knows, everyone can know, everyone has access to knowledge. As a result, what was once valuable is no longer relevant. Previously, involvement was from the top to the bottom since order givers were at the top and order takers were at the bottom. Nowadays, participation is not only sought from the top down, but also and especially from the bottom up, which will lead to the improvement in productivity. And if we train our collaborators in a rational group problem-solving system, which is the quality circles methodology, we can achieve the benefits derived from the following objectives. 
objectives and benefits reported by the quality circles with the teamwork to achieve objectives and solve group problems. 1. Encourage employee participation at work. 2. Boost motivation. 3. Encourage personal growth and leadership. 4. Reduce errors and improve management quality. 5. Encourage collaboration. 6. Take advantage of the synergy that occurs when people work together. 7. Develop problem-solving skills. 8. Develop a problem prevention mindset. 9. Improve communication is number 9 of the list. 10. Create a positive thinking environment for both management and partners. 11. Establish a strong sense of safety. 12. Encourage cost-cutting. 13. In a nutshell, a considerable increase in productivity as well as improvement in the organization results. Keep in mind that the same concept can be used in our daily lives because it aids in the formation of new habits. We are constantly on the lookout for quality as the key component of efficiency. 4. Productivity through people. The six keys to effectiveness. Close to people, close to customers, customer focus. There are six qualities of the leader of excellence that promote productivity in any circumstance of individual in life and in high-level leadership. A. Do the things that need to be done. B. Do them well. C. Do them the first time. D. Do them on time. E. Do them like this always. F. Do them with an economic vision if it is in a company in the business world. Hard to be so perfect, right? 5. Productivity by motivation. How to lead people through motivation. What is to motivate? Well, according to the dictionary, to motivate is to give cause or reason for something. Leadership and all action, both in our personal lives and in the business world, are based on human behavior. And if we consider that my success is measured by the results of my collaborators, the people who can help me, then part of my success will be influence the attitude of these people, my collaborators. Management is people, said Peter Drucker. Orders alone will not drive us to the workplace because we all act based on our own goals. As a result, the collaborator is the director's first customer. He will buy his ideas if he sees his own desires realized and if we can motivate him. People nowadays don't run because we tell them they have to run. Because people can run and put in 50-60% of their running capacity but your leader won't go very far with people like this. There is a new concept, the concept of direction through motivation, where the leader is able to put his objectives in line with the different objectives of his different collaborators. Hence, not to others and just to suggestions. Because this is a subtle way of directing, since how can I, as your collaborator, will you reject your suggestions if my own wishes are at stake. Therefore, not to instructions chain and just to the conviction chain. Therefore, we have to know as soon as possible, as leaders, the motivations, desires, problems of our collaborators, because motivation is the ultimate reason for human behavior. Therefore, our objective as leaders, managers, directors, Sales professionals, father, mother, friends, etc., is to know as soon as possible the motivations of my collaborators. And with people around us, family, friends, etc., know their desires in their life and not just their tastes. The question that arises now is and what is selling? Selling is to convince others of my benefits, of the benefits of my proposals propositions, suggestions, measures, ideas, etc. Selling ideas, we are doing it as leaders on a daily basis. My success depends on the work of my collaborators. Today's and tomorrow's market challenges are not in production, they are in people. 
in men and women, in our colleagues, co-workers and collaborators. People are the organization's most valuable asset and the determining element in the production, in gains and overall performance. Is the experience gains thus far adequate to carry out this function of directing men and women, of people, effectively? Someone could claim that he have or she have 15-20 years of management experience. And then there is a matter of whatever it's 15-20 years or a year repeated 15 or 20 times. Do traditional leaders serve? And if so, how long will they do so? There are many forms of leadership as there are people to lead. There is a general principle applied to each man or woman since each one of us is different. The principle is that of direction through motivation. Therefore, selling ideas. They will buy my ideas if they see their own wishes fulfilled if we know how to motivate them. Since motivation is the ultimate reason for human behavior. 6. Productivity strategies and methodologies. Methodologies that reactivate us for greater productivity. Productivity depends on factors such as motivation that is not linear, also suffers up and downs. How are we going to try to avoid these up and downs? And above all, how can we overcome them and thus energize ourselves to achieve greater productivity? I have had the opportunity to verify that there are days of the week or weeks in the month when productivity drops, sinks to levels that are not in accordance with uh, my personal and professional demands throughout my professional life and also when I was a student. The truth is that it takes time for us to discover how to overcome these and unproductive periods of time so that we can resurface with greater vigor and attain our objectives. In the same way that there are days when we have a lot of energy, good intentions and feel full of productive capacity to take action, there are also days when we don't feel like doing almost anything. Some professionals even say that in those days they are not for anyone. The issue is that those days of poor performance, low motivation and lack of productive ability that we are confronted with have a tendency to multiply, even over weeks, and so enter in a vicious cycle that is not encouraged. Remember that motivation alone is not enough, and although it is an essential part to be more productive, it must be understood that it is one more component of the six main ones, inspiration, motivation, intention, discipline, habits, and enthusiasm, which leads to perseverance, persistence, commitment, essential to achieving success. Not everyone has the enthusiasm to reach our objectives, but the mass majority of us may develop habits that, when combined with inspiration, motivation, and intention, can help us achieve our objectives. As a result, my focus is on being able to design approaches that assist us to break out of these productive slums and therefore re-energize, reactivate and give us our productive activity a fresh push. What is well demonstrated throughout many studies is that the best thing we can do to energize ourselves is to start small. Implement the progressive increase system progressive overload. Rome was not built in a single day. Let's start with the first stone. Let's choose a starting point, a first action, a first easy task in principle to gradually come out of our relaxation. Little by little, being aware that there will already be time, if the right circumstances arises, to go faster and to greater productivity. Be aware that the first action will lead to a second and this second to a third. As they say in the sport world, we are starting with our warm-up. Today's decisions marks our future. The first step will serve as a catalyst for the following. This is the spark that set us in motion and that will help us gain positive inertia. 
For this first action, we do not even need to be motivated. We simply have to do it because it has to be done. Do not worry, the motivation will come by itself. Remember that there is no logical order for the reason why we do something since it depends on different factors that act almost in a cycle, such as inspiration, motivation and enthusiasm. On this occasion, it is the action that awakens our inspiration which translates into greater motivation to continue generating future actions. For this reason, it is very important to start small and progressively in a small increments to increase our work capacity. There are studies that show that a small action can generate great motivation, but also that a small motivation does not usually generate a great action. Setting a small action at the beginning is the key. This creates momentum. As they say, let's the inspiration catch you working. Great achievements in the history began with a small and important action. Try to be a productive person as something incorporated into your lifestyle, in your way of being. This is only achieved through increments, progressive impulses. The same ones with the passage of time will become feats of great value. For this, it is essential not to compare yourself with other people, but to compare yourself with yourself and visualize how you can become in the future if you do your bit today. Start planning tasks that progressively increase in difficulty as the days go by and focus on undertaking the ones you have set for today, just for today. Set yourself, mark yourself, for example, Reading the first chapter of a book, this may be the beginning for you to finish your book in the near future. A long journey begins with a first step. The first mile, the first kilometer, is the first step to finish a marathon. Be patient with yourself, do not create unattainable expectations. These two factors are essential to get out of our productive slump and put ourselves on the right track to improve ourselves as human beings, both in our professional life and for our personal life. In these situations, it may be helpful to use the self-rewarding strategy in some way. I do not mean by this that we have to be complacent with ourselves, but admit that if today we have begun to change our level of productivity, it is thanks to the fact that we are taking actions which, although today are small, are greater than those we did yesterday, but less than we will do tomorrow. Archimedes said, Give me a lever long enough and a fulcrum on which to place it, and I shall move the world. Archimedes said this understanding that there is no such fulcrum, but extreme the example so that the power of the lever, the tool, is understood. In our case, the tool we use is a first small action to get the world moving, our world, which in our case is to get out of relaxation, empathy, routine, and reactivate ourselves to increase our productive capacity progressively. Later you can plan in more definitive and professional way. And what is planning? It can be defined as the organization of the process in time by stages, developing the following process. First, where are we? Situation. Second, how did we get here? History. Third, where are we going? Direction. Fourth, where do we want to go? Should we go? Goals. Fifth, by what stages? Planning. Six, all we have to do is to go from one situation to direction activity. 7. What measures, indicators, should be observed to know if we are achieving success? Control. Therefore, reactivate for greater productivity. Our wish is that it does not remain in a simple sentence and that with our operating will, the will, we put it into motion. 7. Productivity, Pareto and targeting. Improve your productivity through Pareto and the targeting matrix. The little importance of the many 
and the greater importance of a few. Improve your results by applying the Pareto law and targeting. As a person who seeks effectiveness and efficiency in his personal life and in the business world, the question is how do I rise my level of effectiveness in my personal and professional activities? And professionally speaking, commercially speaking, how to develop a continuous process of adaptation to the most interesting on the market and how not to waste gunpowder on salvos. When talking about targeting and the Pareto law, we are going to develop a new concept of action in the business world which could, if well developed, increase our results by more than 20% with the same human resources and without increasing costs. Target something that we want to achieve. It is the objective we are aiming for and it also refers to the little importance of the many and the greater importance of the few. Let me explain. 1. Targeting, optimizing the team's work, making the professional, any person, more selective in their work and life. 2. Targeting is a system that emphasizes obtaining good market information by knowing what customers are doing. 3. Targeting tries to find out who buys and why, and who doesn't buy and why. In other terms, what do you like, what do you want, how do you want it, when do you want it, and this works either on a professional or personal level. 4. Targeting is a continuous process of adaptation to the most interesting part of the market. 5. Targeting is making tailor-made actions, tailor-made decisions. 6. Targeting emphasizes the search for new interested parties, clients, that is prospecting. 7. Targeting is not just filling the channels, selling in, not just getting the product to be resold, selling out, it is to get the final consumer to produce the repurchase, the loyalty, and more important, the fidelization. 8. Targeting is knowing what end customers do or want. 9. Targeting is to attract competitive customers. 10. Targeting seeks to attract to us the dedication of distributors sharing with them the benefits of the program at a local level. 11. Targeting seeks to rise the level of effectiveness of the entire team and our network. Pareto his law and targeting. The little importance of the many and the greater importance of a few. Pareto and the law of 20%, 80%. Pareto in 1906 made the famous observation that 20% of the population owned 80% of the property in Italy. Later, this idea was generalized by Joseph M. Duran on the Pareto Principle, also known as the 80-20 Rule. He studied that people in his society were naturally divided between the few of much and the many of little. In some economic sectors, the Pareto Law changes from 20% 80% to one-third, two-thirds, for example, in agriculture. What the following scheme expresses is that one-third of the clients consume two-thirds of everything that is consumed in the market, and that two-thirds of the rest of the clients consume one-third of everything that is consumed in the market. What comes to ratify that of the few a lot and that of the many little, hence the little importance of the many and the greater importance of the few. Targeting avoids spending gunpowder in salvos, directing our sales efforts in the most interesting of the market for us, without abandoning the rest of the market but with sales efforts appropriate to its importance. Hence, according to the scheme, our targeting should be aimed at the one-third of the customers who consume, buy, two-thirds of everything that is in the market without abandoning the rest of the customers, but with due dedication. We are going to delve into Pareto and targeting to try to increase your results with its matrix. According to the scheme that we represent, in the upper row of the targeting matrix, 
the potential of final consumers, customers, concerning our strategic products is represented by the letters of L for large, M for medium, and S for small. While in the first column of the targeting matrix, the letters A, B, and C appear, which refers to the degree of our participation in the business of each client in our market. It is to say our market share with each client. Thus, client C are those in which our participation in the client business is less than 20%. Being clients B, those in which our participation in the client's business is between 20 and 50%. And clients A, being those in which our participation in the client business is equal to or greater than 50%. And with all this information, we can now establish what our ideal targeting will be. Targets 1 and 2 will be for large and medium C clients, as seen in the targeting matrix graphic, and there are the greater of greater possibilities for growth for us. Knowing that clients see, since our participation is less than 20%, this means that it can also be zero, that is, there we will have very little or no participation in those clients, and it will be our beloved competition that will make the most part in the client's business, and they will give us almost nothing. In third and fourth place, our targeting will be for large and medium B clients, where we have better opportunities to sell more because they already know us and we are already within the client with significant participation. Concerning clients A, where our participation is equal or greater than 50%, our strategy will be that of fidelization both in large, medium, and small clients. And for small C and B clients, perhaps the strategy is to maintain mail or telephone contact with them and not waste our time in interviews. Ultimately, as we can see, targeting makes us work in a much more selective way, knowing the greater importance of a few and the little importance of the many. That is to develop our productivity. But like everything in life, knowing how to apply our intelligence to each situation, each one of them surely requires a different treatment. And remember that if sales, negotiation, communication are not mathematics, targeting is not mathematics either. Based on all that has been said so far, I propose the following project. Considering our situation, what has been our targeting matrix so far? And what will it be in one, two years? Take the necessary time for reflection and realization. 8. Eisenhower and the productivity matrix. If there is one thing that today's professionals and students actually need, it is an efficient a system that allows them to better organize their times responsibilities, and perhaps prevent procrastination. We talk about Eisenhower and his productivity matrix. There are several systems that can help us better our time management, work organization, and productivity, but I believe this is one of the greatest, if not the best. The Eisenhower matrix can greatly assist you in resolving job organization issues, hence reducing stress at, at your work, from day to day, week to week, and month to month, as well as dramatically increase your productivity. Many consider this methodology the best way to combat procrastination. The Eisenhower matrix helps you to be able to elucidate the priorities of your task, thoroughly cataloging them by their level of urgency and importance, leaving in a second level those tasks that are less important and less urgent, but that still have to be taken into account. This matrix is made up of four quadrants with different work strategies each. The first quadrant is called that of urgent and important task, and it means what we have to do first. This urgent and an important task needs to be completed in a short time as they are important to our career and our work. 
Some professionals, including students, usually use the Pomodoro technique with a stopwatch to complete this task in a structured way in time, dividing them into a small portions of time until their final achievement. In this way, they manage to concentrate all their productive focus on finishing them as soon as possible since they are urgent and important tasks. An example could be reviewing an important document that we have in our hands that urgently needs our approval or signature. To the second quadrant or less urgency but of great importance, we place tasks that, although important, do not require our immediate attention. These types of tasks are usually brought out into our plan by making them on the calendar so that we do not forget them. The third quadrant is used for urgent but less important tasks and encourage us to try to delegate these types of tasks to others. People who are unable to delegate this type of activity to others frequently schedule them in time slots on our calendars where they can be completed in an automated manner almost without thinking. Re responding emails, messages or phone calls is one example of this type of tasks. If you are someone who can be trusted to delegate this type of works to your employees or team, this quadrant will become critical to your productivity and the productivity of your organization. Remembering that although they are tasks that we delegate to other people, we still have to keep up with the rhythm in which they are executed and completed. We cannot lose sight of them. The fourth quadrant may well help us to confirm which task we can eliminate from our work routine since they are not important and they do not have any urgency in either. This quadrant prompts us to consider how much time we waste on activities that are neither beneficial nor productive to our growth. So if you can figure out what these tasks are, you can strive to do away with them entirely. According to several research, the fourth quadrant of low urgency and low important tasks take us the longest during the day, which is discouraging because it reduces our productivity and even profitability as professionals or students. Of course, the finest example here is the amount of time we spend on social media, despite the fact that this is not our primary work nor one that nourish or grows us as people. To this day, we are all overwhelmed by the number of tasks we have to accomplish. We become less efficient, less productive, and even postpone more than usual when we are overwhelmed. We currently receive more inputs from social media messages than from emails or phone calls, which can make us feel unease if we don't know how to channel them properly. And all these types of work can lead us to have a feeling of dissatisfaction with what we are doing and it can affect our productivity. So using the Eisenhower matrix can be our great solution. For many people, whether they are students or professional, it is not easy to create barriers by delimiting the task we are working on with the task we should be working on. Let's move on to see who Dwight Eisenhower was and why the importance of his matrix applied in any field of our lives. The most famous phrases of the President of the United States Eisenhower are Pessimism never won any battle. An intellectual is a man who takes more words than necessary to tell more than he knows. Leadership is the art of getting someone else to do something you want done because he wants to do it. The people who value their privileges above their principles soon lose both. In preparing for battle, I have always found that plans are useless, but planning is indispensable. But the most important phrase we want to refer in this video about the ability to be productive is this. The most urgent decisions are rarely the most important ones. For me, this phrase is full of wisdom and is much more profound than it seems at first glance. Indeed, 
as Eisenhower says, important tasks are rarely urgent and those that are urgent rarely become important. Dwight Eisenhower was possibly one of the most influential presidents of the United States, as his personality and style of life had a significant impact on the country's governance. Before being president of the United States, he reached the highest military rank in the American Army as a five-star general. His work as his general stands out for his planning capacity in invasion actions against the Nazi in the World War II and his capacity for logistical planning in both soldier and material to supply them. But also as president, he launched the space research plan that we now know as NASA, also the planning of the entire highway network in the country that is still used today, and he also created the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency known as DARPA. In short, his work as the 34th President of the United States was very productive. Several management gurus have studied his productive capacity carefully, and the vast majority of today's productive systems are copies or replicas of his time management matrix. We all have our own method for managing tasks and time that we devote to them, and we all know how to prioritize them in some way. The vast majority of us are used to using notebooks where we write down the tasks to be developed, and we even use applications that help us to do so. Unfortunately, the vast majority of the applications that we know, whenever for Android or Apple or Microsoft or Macintosh, do not usually use the Eisenhower matrix to organize them in four quadrants, since this does not have a visual effectiveness according to the expert programmers, since it is not efficient in the eyes of the consumer. In any case, the main thing is to recognize the level of importance and urgency of the task in order to effectively organize them. Surprisingly, after using this matrix a few times, we will quickly find ourselves in the situation where we must select how we prioritize the tasks that have been assigned to us on a daily basis. This means that we may immediately prevent procrastination because we have mentally structured ourselves in a simple and rapid manner. Try it and you will see how when you are overwhelmed by the number of things you have to do, tasks you have to finish, applying this knowledge and visualizing the Eisenhower matrix in your mind immediately helps you to be more productive. I recommend trying it for a week, which is enough time to acquire the ability to quickly visualize it in your mind. This methodology also helps you to ask yourself the right questions when deciding whenever a task is a priority or not. It is very easy to see the influence that each of the tasks can bring us economically if it is a work task since economic effectiveness is the primary criterion in the business world. First, do what gives me the best performance what is more profitable for me. I would like to remind you that, like all kinds of time management methodology, systems and task priorities, the key is in how we execute them, since they will be of no use to us if we are not able to do what we have to do. Make no mistake, there are many systems and methodologies like this, but people who execute them well could be counted on the fingers of a one hand. Persistence and personal disciplines are fundamental factors to be more productive. Without them, no system or matrix will function properly. We will continue to cover the topic of increasing productivity in the future, expanding and deepening it so that we can apply in both in our daily lives and to the figures of professionals with obligations in the corporate world, as with the advancement of themes that are always of personal and professional importance to us. Until a new opportunity arises, cheers!